What's up everybody? This is Mr. Second Passport. Today we're going to cover a very important topic for anyone thinking about possibly moving uh, to the coast of Ecuador. And that is something that I find incredible growing up in the U.S., you know, where we don't really have this. Uh, and that's microclimates. Ecuador is just full of these microclimates where literally you're driving and like one valley is like dry as a bone and then you just swip around this one little curve or this one little mountain and literally 400 meters after it's all lush and green uh it's so it's so weird right and uh the ecuador coast is no exception there it's full of these little microclimates that we're going to cover today uh and it's super interesting so if you like the sun you definitely want to to watch this this video because there's a lot of beaches in Ecuador that really, if we're being honest, don't get that much sun except for maybe three or four months a year, right? And that's what we're about to cover now. So let's take a let's take a close look. If you like this, don't forget to get to subscribe, hit the like button below. It helps the channel bring you more info just like this, and also you'll get notified uh, when new videos get published. Climate. Now, in general, the whole coast of Ecuador, right, from Esmeraldas on down to Guayaquil, to the delta of Guayaquil, uh, something you should know, like, there is a rainy and a dry season, right? And the rainy season is surprisingly when you get the most sun, and it's also the most heat and humidity of the whole year. So, like, from late December, early January on through, I'd say, all the way until early May, uh, to mid-May even, uh, you get rains, sometimes torrential, you get rains, and then you get a lot of sun, and you have a lot of heat and humidity, right? So, um, for me, that is the, uh, that is the rainy season of Ecuador. And then the rest of the year, in general, on the coast of Ecuador, all the way down to, is in Guayaquil included, even though it's not really on the beach, uh, what you have is uh, the rest of the year from about late May right now all the way till about December, you get uh, overcast is the word that describes it. It's cooler. It's not as hot. It's not as humid. It doesn't really rain much. It might mist occasion occasionally, but uh, there's not much sun that ever pops out either. So, I mean, it's uh, it's pretty much just overcast and blah from about late May all the way till um, almost through December, really. So it's about seven, uh, almost eight, seven, eight months a year that you're almost uh, without interruption overcast on the coast of Ecuador. A lot of people don't like that, but there are some exceptions that we're going to cover today that, that don't really get uh, this uh, just constant cloudiness, right? that a lot of parts of the coast do in these seven, eight months out of the year. And so the first one here is Atacames. Right here, up on these north-facing beaches, I've found that they get more sun, consistent sun, than, than these beaches here just to the south that we're about to cover. So this first microclimate here, th this is every time I go to Atacames, and I've been there in several different times a year, uh, I always get kind of this kind of weather. You know, you might have a little bit of haze, so it's not a completely bluebird day, but but it's pretty sunny and warm. But now, as you head south, you just dip around this curve here, and then you're getting due west-facing beaches. And from about Mompicha here, it gets really, really green, like really, really green, and almost like a rainforesty. And then there's a little inlet here, and then you hit Paternales, and a little bit further south is... Hama and then Kanoa. This whole beachhead here looks like this for about seven, eight months a year. This is how I always see Kanoa when I visit, and I've been in all different types of years, more times than I can count. This is what I see about seven, eight months a year in Kanoa. So, like, if you don't like clouds, if, like if it depresses you day after day of overcast uh, grayness and gray ocean because the the sky's gray. Uh, you might want to reconsider moving to a place like Kanoa, for instance, uh, or Mompiche, very overcast for about seven months a year. So 
definitely something to consider. And that continues really all the way down to about Bahia, right? You have you have that uh, that overcastness that those seven months a year, right, from May to all the way to December. But then, as you can see here, um, for for whatever reason, for me it's it's really unexplainable. Maybe the currents, but you, just another half hour down the road here, and you get to these beaches, San Clasin, San Jacinto, and San Clemente, and Crucita very popular with expats and they are some of the sunniest beaches on the coast of Ecuador or everywhere else it's cloudy and overcast you can pretty much count on sun here most days um, even during those seven months a year where it's usually overcast on other parts of the coast of Ecuador so if you're looking for sun all the way down uh, San Clemente Crucita all the way down through Manta into Santa Marianita here this whole beachhead here that's also as you noticed kind of north facing um, this whole beachhead from about here south gets a ton more sun than beaches just to the north or just to the south that we're about to cover now so if sun is your thing you might want to consider these uh, these beaches here right <clears throat> this beachhead in general now as we continue to head south we hit another microclimate. As you can see, the beachhead, it almost goes, uh, maybe this has something to do with it. For me, it's unexplainable. But the beachhead goes from north facing to almost south facing, southwest facing. But it's amazing. As soon as you whip around, and I've been on these little roads here that connect Santa Marinita, which is usually sunny, right? And then there, there, there's some back roads here where you have to like stop sometimes so pigs can cross. And, uh, and you whip around here in just about 10-15 minutes of driving. And then you whip around and BAM! Right as you hit San Lorenzo, you get this. You get this right here. It's amazing. And I've done this on the same day where it was a bluebird day in Santa Marianita. I whip around this bend right around midday and BAM! I hit this. This just this almost it seems like impenet impenetrable cloud layer just covering right from San Lorenzo clear on down south towards uh, southward on the coast so you just get this overcast about seven months a year starting in this town called San Lorenzo right and as you can see how the beachhead changed directions all the way down Santa Rosa is a tiny little town where nobody really knows much about it and uh, then there's this town that a lot of gringos like, that I've actually bought and, and sold in, and it's uh, Puerto Cayo, same issue, uh, seven months a year, you're looking at solid overcastness, right, cloudy. So, you know, are you okay with that or not? For whatever reason, Machalia always seems, then you have to pass by Machalia in order to get to this town called Puerto Lopez. And as you can see here, Right near Puerto Lopez, there's this little indigenous town called Agua Blanca where you actually can actually go and have dinner or stay the night uh, in their little cabins. It's kind of an, an indigenous reserve, and it's a, it's a dry rainforest, so it's super uh, it, it's a super interesting microclimate. And here, Machali in general for me, it's just a little bit sunnier than the nearby Puerto Cayo and even Puerto Lopez, where Puerto Lopez same issue as Puerto Cayo and San Lorenzo, overcast, six, seven months a year, right? Just very, very overcast right here in Puerto Lopez. So as you can see here, just these super interesting microclimates start to appear. And on down, all the way down, really from San Lorenzo, all the way down, but with a little kind of little sunny break in Machalia, which tends to be a little more sunny in my opinion. And then as you come down, all the way down through Puerto Rico, Ayampe, tiny little towns, La Rinconada, tiny little towns, Olón, Montanita, um, where a lot of gringos obviously like to go party. It's a party town, surf town uh, in on the coast of Ecuador, probably the number one. Uh, <clears throat> cloudy, all the way down through Montanita and the next town down uh, where I've uh, had property, Manglar Alto. Uh, all of this is, is green and lush and 
cloudy, overcast, about seven months a year, right? So kind of zooming out here a little bit, right? As we head down from Monta, as soon as we make that turn um, to the beaches that are kind of almost south facing uh, to San Lorenzo, this whole, really, they call it Ruta del Sol, the sun route, really doesn't have that much sun for seven months out of the year. It's just pure overcastness all the way down through Montanita and Mangler Alto. Now, you know what's super interesting here? There's a little town here, doesn't even appear, called M M Mangler Alto. Then there's some other towns, really small, called Rio Chico, one right after the other. You can walk. There's a gas station leaving Mangler Alto, a little cemetery. Then there are these towns called Rio Chico, Cariate, San Antonio, right? And as you can see, it's super interesting. It starts to get drier and drier and drier um, and li literally you're just walking down the beach and it just gets the the surroundings the landscapes get drier and drier and drier browner and browner and browner more and more like southern california and then right <clears throat> valdivia and once you hit about ayangue the sun starts coming out right even during these seven months of overcastness on most of the rest of the coast of ecuador uh from about ayangue here South, uh, down, on down through Bayanita, La Libertad, and Salinas, um, <clears throat> right? This is Ayanque. It's a neat little cove. Uh, you start to get more sun, right? You can count on more sun, definitely sunnier beaches. Uh, Ayanque is one of the only beaches in Ecuador that offers scuba diving um, off the coast here in this little cove. And it'll, uh, it's generally, it used to be a little fishing village. A few gringos have bought in here on the cliffs uh, and in town, but not many. It's still, still very local. Rich Guayaquileños, Guayaquil people, have kind of bought up the front line of the ocean a long time ago, though, so not much beachfront to be had uh, in this town. But, <clears throat> but anyway, definitely more sun. More sun. You can usually count on more sun in Ayanque on south through Salinas. This is kind of how I have always visited Salinas. It's it kind of has this gray haze um, for seven months a year. It's it's a little bit sunnier for sure than just north from about Montanita on up, uh, but you know it does it does definitely have more sun uh, on this southern tip of the coast here from about Ayangue down to to Salinas. More sun, but definitely not bluebird day, right? Those seven months of the year. When you make the turn here, right. For whatever reason, because these beaches are south-facing too, so I don't know what the deal is. But when you make this turn and go to the area of Playas, then you get even, this is Playas here, you get way more sun. You can count on sun. Um, it's one of the, definitely one of the sunniest beaches in Ecuador. For whatever reason, just these, these little microclimates, super interesting uh, how it works here in Ecuador. So, um, as in, you know... In summary, real quick, right, the sunniest beaches of Ecuador here uh, that you can usually count on sun when the rest of the coast is overcast, you know, solid overcast for seven months a year. Here's Playas, kind of near Guayaquil here in the south. Um, a little bit more sun you'd have in Salinas all on up to Ayangue. And then from about Manglar Alto, Montanita on up, all the way to San Lorenzo here, just south of Manta, it's solid overcast for about seven months a year. And then from about Santa Marianita, Manta, Crucita, San Jacinto, San Clemente, right? This area here on the central coast near Manta, more sun. And then it gets super overcast again. Once you go from about Bahia all the way on up through Mompiche, it's very green and lush and overcast uh, for about seven months a year. And then you make this turn and get these north-facing beaches here. Atacames on up to Esmeraldas, you can usually count on a little bit more sun. That's a ge very general, quick rundown of the coast of Ecuador and, uh, and the microclimates and the overcastness and the sunniness of the different beaches. If you like this, don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button. I'm Mr. Second Passport. Take care.